Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. It feels like a while since I've done a video other than the journaling challenge. So today I wanna to share with you some of the pages I did in my journal um, over my and my husband's wedding anniversary trip. I wanna tell you about the pens I brought, how they worked, and show you some of the goodies that we picked up along the way in various shops. <clears throat> we went to a place that's about maybe less than an hour drive from where I live. It's called Herman, Missouri. It's a smaller town that has a German heritage. Um, settlers came from Germany. Don't ask me what year, I've forgotten, but it's now like a place of a lot of wineries and um, small shops, not wineries, is that what you call it? Like vineyards where they make wine. Anyway, um, fun places to eat and things like that. So my saintly husband came along with me to countless shops and he said that my company was what he wanted. So he came along and he did at some point get a little tired of the shops. But anyway, let's look at the journal pages. Um, I started out uh, misdating it, but I... Uh, talked about some of the things that we did when we first got there. I This is from my friend Kathy. This is not to do with the trip, but I kind of liked how that looked on this paper here. But the other things are little segments, mostly little snippets from the trip. Ken was very sweet, and each day we were on our little outing. He had an anniversary card for me. I didn't have anything for him, but I did have a card later on the actual date. So I tore stuff off of bags and flyers and so forth. This here is the, I wrote with my Bennu Euphoria and I used the Tasha Golden Wheat and it was pretty good. It didn't really bleed through and it didn't feather and that's a great ink, but on this paper, I felt a little, a little bit dry. So then I, um, switched over to the pen that I had, um, let's see, it was my Leonardo, and I had the new ink I'm trying, the Diatramentus um, Fog Gray, and it wrote like a dream on here. It was wonderful. It just, it was the best, best flow. I like how that blue looks on this craft style paper, but the flow was really, really wonderful. Um, business cards here I did um, a little kind of flip through of business cards this is where we went the third day we went to a town called Rocheport and it's a historical town very cute the building we stayed in was called the schoolhouse and it was a bed and breakfast from a schoolhouse made in a schoolhouse from that was built in 1912 so I just like to put little snippets, receipts, things from bags and so forth. This is the cutest little shop. It's green, it has these flower boxes, I guess you call them on the windows. <clears throat> and in there, there's all kinds of odds and ends, but I always find something I want. They have like um, Polish pottery there, the real detailed and colorful pottery. They have steins, they have soaps, um, a little bit of everything. Some appeals to me and some is not is not my thing, but towards the end of the shop, when you check out, there is sealing wax. So these are two that I bought, this copper and this sort of aqua blue or turquoise blue, and um, it's soft, so it's malleable, can go through the mail. I like the wick, I'm ha I have the best luck with the wick. Um, wick sealing wax. So I bought two of those and used some already to do this. I picked out a little deer because it's cute. I like deer and also um, because I thought it'd be nice for Christmas. So I don't remember. I don't remember where these are made, but this was made in Italy. It's kind of a nice little size. It's pretty compact and it makes a good stamp. 
Just wish I could remember where those were manufactured, but happy with those. Also found some recipe cards at a coffee shop that we went into where I got an ice latte. I kind of like this black buffalo check pattern. I know people don't use these a whole lot anymore, but I still like to, to give a person a recipe on a recipe card. So I bought those. I want to point out here too, in case you would like to try this idea, if you have envelopes, um, ones that you just want to do something with that are in your crafting stash or from a card you have received, you can cut off the corners. That's what I did here. Um, these were from the card, one of the cards from my husband, and I glued one down, inserted the other, and glued it down. So it makes this really nice little tuck spot. Um, just kind of holds it secure. I had just had the one and the stuff was kind of falling out. Maybe I needed to cut it with a little more height to it, but then I just did the other corner and um, it seems to be working really well to hold in these little miscellaneous pieces of memorabilia. Let's see here. Um, little thing from the receipt from the antique store cup of tea. Some of the stuff is from cards we received. This was a neat place, this Saley Mountain Company. They had leather items in their boots and purses and different kinds of jackets, stickers, soaps, cards. I got a couple neat cards there that were photographed by a local hobby farmer. Uh, a woman, I um, forget her name, but she did this one. She also likes photography. And this one, I thought those glass bottles in the sunlight were really pretty. So yeah, there was just a lot of little doodad stuff to pick up. Here I put some more business cards and tags that were on things. On the way home, we stopped at a um, country store, which just looks... So kind of in the middle of nowhere, very rural community, but it was really fun because you could get a sandwich for $2. You pick your meat, your cheese, and they put it on white bread and they put whatever toppings on it you want. And their motto is kind of boots, bullets, britches, and bologna. So we shopped around there at the bed and breakfast. I had this caramel tea and I saved the tea bag from that. And then we went to this shop. This one was called Topiaries. My husband really liked that shop. <clears throat> and then this business card. We did not stay there, but I think that is so pretty. It's a little watercolor. So I just adorned my journal with that. And you can see where I tied some of the jute from the packaging on there. So... There's a funny thing around our house where we joke about we have too many mugs, but everybody loves mugs, so we keep buying mugs. So sometimes I have to weed them out. But this one came with, um, what well, didn't come with our tree house cottage stay, my husband, you could add that on. And so he did that for me and let me pick out the mug. This is sort of a grayed green, or maybe it's a green gray I don't know green gray but I like it it's pretty comfortable and I, I like the steady wideness of that it's for a steady um cup so you don't knock it over and then we went to a place called Missouri Life which is all handmade items in Missouri and of course I saw this gorgeous hand done mug and we bought that I've been using both of these since we got back. They're a lot of fun. I really appreciate the look of and enjoy the look of pottery. So I just think this one is so pretty. The only thing I don't like, which I didn't notice when I bought it, is this little pinkish section there. It sounds weird, but it makes me think of like when you skin your knee. <laughs> it just looks kind of, I don't like that. But the rest of it is gorgeous, so I try not to look at that. 
And then, of course, I couldn't go somewhere without buying candles. This one is called Rome. As you can see, this one we bought at the country store. Um, there were knives and guns, bullets. I mean, any outdoorsy, Carhartt, Fjall Robin, the stuff that if you don't really need, you wish you were the type of person that did need it because it was really cool. Anyway, I loved the scent of this. And I like these Woodwick ones and I like the amber glass. So it looks pretty. Oh, man. Just taking that lid off. It smells so good. You really get mo more pine, I think, than the sandalwood or vetiver, although I'm not real familiar with that scent. And then this was from another shop that we really like called Tattered something. Tattered, what is it? Tattered something. Anyway, if you go to Herman, you'll see it. Um, fresh baked bread. And it does smell like bread. It's very nice. So I am going to probably light that a little later um, in the, into the fall, maybe not right now, but it seems like a cozy scent. And then we went to an antique store a couple times. We're looking for a cabinet that my husband can <clears throat> um, display his knife collection in, but I also like to look at other stuff. So this, well, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Isn't this cute? This is an old creamer. So... The best the lady knew there was that at each individual table setting, people would have their little jar of creamer or cream. But the thing is called a creamer. And I thought in my journaling frame of mind, what a nice little bottle to hold an ink sample. So you know how when you're filling them, these things are a little bit um, prone to tip over. So... I do have another thing where I have coffee beans in a jar and you can kind of squish that down in there and it'll hold it secure. But I thought this could be really handy. So it, yeah, it wobbles, but it's not gonna tip over. And that was just so cute. And I got a bargain, it was only $3. Some of them were going for five. I scouted out the cheapest one. And then I saw the little brass deer who needs a little bath with some brasso or something. But I do like deer in this position of this deer reminds me a lot of a wooden deer that my grandma had on a shelf back when I was a child. It was much bigger, but just the stance of that deer made me think of her carved wooden one, which was probably carved in Germany. That's where she immigrated from in like 1913. So I think that's why I have a little bit of a tender spot in my soul for deer because they remind me of her. So to talk about the pens, I can get this open, yes I can. This Bennu pushes the limits with this pen case. It can be done. Um, these are among the pens my husband has bought for me since I've become a pen enthusiast. And this one he bought for our anniversary, so I brought that along. In here I have Tasha Olive, or it's like Yuguisu, and that's working really nice in here. When I uh, selected this pen, I didn't think about the green aspect so much. I more was picking up on the colors. It is called Botanical Garden. So it's, of course, you would have lots of green. But I was trying to pick up on some of the other colors to match um, an ink with it. And I thought, I'm going to try the green. And I've actually really liked that the best so far. It's a, it's a good good flowing ink and lots of nice shading. The Bennu Euphoria. What do I have in here? I have, um, I think, yeah, I have that new sepia ink I'm trying by Diatramentus. And it's really nice. It doesn't have a lot of depth. It doesn't have, like, shading or sheen. Um, I, I don't like sheen as much. It doesn't have shading or shimmer, but it just is a nice, reliable ink, and it's a very neutral brown. I kind of talked about that in a way that maybe made it sound kind of bland, but I, I like it because it's just, um, just a brown ink that's kind of medium in intensity, and it just is easy to read. It doesn't 
feather out a whole lot. I don't know. It's a, it's a great ink. I'm quite happy with it. And then again, I told you that I had in here um, the fog gray. It's empty and cleaned out now, but so I'll set that aside. But that's what I carried, and I most mornings I journaled. I mean, we were only gone three nights, so the first two um, days I did do some journaling, and then the last day when we were at the schoolhouse bed and breakfast, I really didn't have time to. But I also brought along a book I haven't been able to share with you yet, which is the Bible. And I've seen this on a couple people's Instagram, and I'm like, where can you get a Bible that size? And can my eyes handle the small print of a Bible that size? This looks like cloth, but it's like um, sort of a rubbery feel. But I do like the texture and the tone of it. And I just am a fan of the longer shaped journals and things. So here's an empty phone case. The point of the um, post that I had seen was, you know, do you grab your phone or your Bible more often? I always pick up my phone. I mean, we're watching a show, people go to get a snack, I pick up my phone. And I think the point of the person, it's the uh, woman from my white Bible, I think that I was reading, like, try to make it a habit to pick up your Bible. Um, maybe more than your phone. And I liked that challenge. I haven't met that challenge yet, but I did want to speak about this. It is super compact. I like taking this to church actually because it's just so much of a convenient size and it's not too heavy. I've kept this basic cardboard, um, what do you call that, jacket, and that works for now. But it's super handy and it's a type of print it's supposed to be easy to read, and I've got to say, I really find that it is, it's not as easy as my nine or 10 point font size, but this is doable. And it's the whole entire Bible, not just the New Testament. So I had that with me, and it just makes a nice little cozy stack there. It's not too overwhelming for a trip. I don't mind bulk when I'm at home, but to travel with a lot of that sometimes just seems a little overbearing to me. So this worked extremely well. And I just love the idea that you can have the phone or the Bible, you know, stacked together by your couch, wherever you're sitting, and you can have both of them. We oftentimes want our phone handy, understandable. It's part of who we are as a culture generally now. You don't have to be addicted to it, but we like to have it handy. So um, I like that the two of them can just kind of be there together. And the sizes are so similar. I don't know, they work together well. So that is a new thing. I got this um, off of Amazon. It did take me a little bit of searching, but it's called the pocket thin line bible there's pocket bibles this is the thin line that's got the tall would you say profile is that the right word um and it's the comfort print so it's yeah it is small but i wear glasses to read and i i can read this i can read this okay here's the information if you're interested i did not spend 30 dollars for it it was cheaper it's called leather soft, so it's not leather. It, it kind of feels kind of weird, but I love how it looks. So that that little minor infraction doesn't bother me. I do like the gold with this golden brown. So super handy, very happy. Wasn't sure, but I I have been very happy with that purchase. It has been a good one for me. I think that's all. Those are my doodads from the trip. I think I've shown you the main things, the mugs, the candles, the ceiling wax, how I journaled. Um, so I always like to see what people have done or collected on their excursions. And I thought I'd share with you the same from my end of things. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Take care.